So uh, we know that origin of the magnetic field is the charges which are in motion inside an atom. Remember, in the first section, we talk about that. Inside the atom, electrons are in motion. These moving electrons produces a magnetic field and most of the atom gains a magnetic field. They behave just like a tiny magnets. And then these atoms comes together, uh, the atoms whose magnetic fields are in the same direction and forms domains. And if most of the domains are in the same direction, remember we said that it's a natural magnet, but if the domains are in random directions, they will cancel each other. It's a magnetic material like iron, cobalt and nickel and so on. If no domains are formed, it is non-magnetic material, just like paper, plastic and so on. We studied this in section one. Yani, the charges which are in motion produces the magnetic field, but the only charges which are in motion is not inside an atom. Yes, we know that if atoms, uh, the charge inside the atoms, if they move, they produce a magnetic field for that atom. And these magnetic fields, I mean, these atoms uh, form domains. If domains are in the same direction, they form a magnet, just like this one in the picture. This is a, a natural magnet. But we can set the charged particles into motion. Just the previous uh, lesson I explained, electric current. Electric current is also the electric charges which are in motion. Electrons are moving. So it is also possible to produce a magnetic field by moving the charges, by moving the electrons, by moving positive ions inside a conductor. So electrons moving through a conductor, a wire, it can be a copper wire, aluminum or silver, whatever, so or go, uh, gold or iron so if electrons are moving through a conductor so because these electrons are in motion in motion and we know that charge in motion produce a magnetic field these moving electrons inside the conductor also produces a magnetic field around this wire uh, just like this example look at here this picture is showing you that the, here is a wire and initially this wire is not given an electric current no electric current is given look at the direction of the compass needles right there all compass needles are pointing in the same direction they are pointing in the direction of the earth's magnetic field so earth's magnetic field at this location is like that because look at the red point uh, end of the compass needle which is n pole so the compass needle always uh, shows the direction of the magnetic field at that point but if you give electric current to this wire by using a, a battery just like this one, this one is now uh, not connected, but if we connect this battery to this wire, you are going to observe that. So this compass needle will change their uh, orientation. Look at their directions. So uh, in this picture, they used five compass needles and you are going to see that this red ends are pointing in different directions. So which means a magnetic field around the wire has changed. I mean, initially it was the only Earth's magnetic field, but now a second magnetic field appeared right there when you give electric current and this, um, uh, this electric current produces a magnetic field around the wire and compass needle uh, changes its direction. So if you use, uh, here is five compass needles, maybe you can use 10, maybe 20, maybe 30. You are going to observe that the comp if you join the compass needles, all this compass needle forms a circle. That's why uh, the first scientist who did this experiment is Erstad. When Erstad did this experiment, he observed that all compass needles change their direction so that if you join these uh, needles, you are going to obtain a circle. You have a magnetic field around a straight wire, which carries a current, a very strong current, I, produces a magnetic field around the wire, which is in circular shape. 
this picture is also representing the uh, iron filings. Remember, iron filings are magnetic materials. If uh, they are exposed to a magnetic field, they will arrange their uh, direction in the same direction of the magnetic field. Look at these patterns. You are going to see that there are circles. These iron filings form circles around the wire. You can draw as many circles as possible around this wire. So the first scientist who did this experiment is important, this name, ministry exam question, they asked his name to you. The first scientist who discovered that electric current, strong electric current produces a magnetic field is Hans Christian Oerstedt. His name is important. And Hans Christian Oerstedt discovered that a strong Strong. Why we need strong? Because just single wire, single wire cannot produce a very strong magnetic field if you don't use a very strong current. That's why they use this word strong. Steady. What does steady mean? I mean constant. It doesn't change like a battery current. Battery current is a constant steady current. Ursa discovered that strong steady current produces a magnetic field lines around the wire right here you are going to watch see a movie now watch very carefully a man is doing a, an experiment just the one which i explained uh, you are going to uh, see this experiment right now i have a piece of plastic through which i drilled a hole and then i took a wire and looped it through the hole 10 times so i have 10 strands of the wire here flowing through this hole. So if I have one amp of current flowing in the wire, I will have essentially 10 amps that's flowing in a straight line through the hole in the plastic. So he made a, a wire, very thick wire, by using 10 different wires, combined them. Each wire is uh, carrying a current one ampere. Because there are 10 wires, there is 10 ampere current he's going to give now. I'm now going to sprinkle some iron filings onto the plastic. Because iron filings are magnetic materials. They will change their shape when a magnetic field is applied. I will now apply a current and I will have to tap the plastic to get the iron filings to move. Now, look at the direction. Now, the direction of the filings change. And you can see how the iron filings have rotated to form circles around the wire, indicating the form of the magnetic field intensity generated by a current carrying wire. So, this is the proof that, yes, if a wire there is a current, but very strong current. A magnetic field is formed around this wire. And this magnetic field is circular pattern, in circular pattern. So a strong, steady current produces magnetic field lines around a wire. And magnetic field lines form concentric circles. They are circles, concentric. Concentric means they have common center. And circles with common center is called concentric circles around the wire and the wire is the center of this uh, circular pattern just like this this is the wire so this is the electric current direction up and around this wire there are circular magnetic fields and each circle has the same center what is the center center is the wire itself that's why it's called concentric circles only not these uh, circles there are maybe you can draw thousands of circles maybe billions of circles around this wire which for, uh, which indicates the magnetic field formed around this wire by the electric current and second thing you should know plane of the magnetic field is always perpendicular to the wire now look at this plane i am going to draw now plane of the magnetic field it is horizontal plane of the magnetic field is horizontal but wire is in vertical that's why always this plane of the magnetic field will be perpendicular to the wire, perpendicular to the electric current. And if your electric current is in vertical, so plane of the magnetic field will be in horizontal, just like this. If the electric current is in horizontal, plane of the magnetic field will be in vertical, just in the 
second one. And uh, because uh, magnetic field is a vector quantity, we learned that these circular lines also must have a direction. Did we give a direction right now? No, we only showed the circles. But what about the direction? So if the magnetic field is a direction, this circular uh, magnetic field lines also must have a direction. So direction of the magnetic field is around the wire is found by using right hand rule. It's a rule to find the direction of the circulation of the magnetic field around a wire which creates a strong magnetic field. Look at this picture. So I am going to ask you to produce to use your pen. Again, you will use your pen and your pen will you are going to assume it's a it's a, a, a wire and uh, you are going to hold your pen by uh, you, are, you are going to grasp your pen uh, by your right hand, grasp the wire, you are going to grasp the pen so that your thumb is in the direction of the electric current. You are the tip of the pen will show electric current direction. Tip of the pen will show electric current direction. You are going to grasp your pen so that so your thumb will show the tip. Other curled forefinger around the wire will show the direction of the circulation of the magnetic field lines. Now I'm going to open my camera and I'm going to show you my camera. Hold your pen like this. This is your pen. And it's a conductor. You are going to assume this is the wire. And electric current direction always going to be show the tip. Tip of the pen will show the direction of the electric current. You are going to grasp your uh, pen like this with your right hand so you are going to hold your pen so that your thumb will show in the same direction of the electric current direction which is the tip <laughs> curled forefinger around the wire will show the magnetic field circulation our magnetic field circulates around this wire this is what right hand rule is so this is the rule for finding direction of the magnetic field around a wire grasp the wire so that your thumb is in the direction of the electric current other curled forefinger will indicate the direction of the circulation of the magnetic uh, field lines around this uh, wire now we are going to study the cases first if the electric current is perpendicular to the plane of the page, perpendicular to the plane of the page. So what does it mean perpendicular to the plane of the page? It is into the page. It's going into the page or out of the page. There are two cases. If the electric current is perpendicular to the plane of the page, it can be into the page or it can be out of the page. First, we will study the out of the page case. An electric current is coming to the out of the page in like this one. This is the wire. You see this dot is representing electric current is out of page. So how does the magnetic field direction form around the, this uh, wire? Now, I will show on the board and you are going to do this. Yes, now you see the table, my table. Yes. Now, uh, Perpendicular to the plane of the page means this. Into the page, it's going in or out of the page, it's coming to you, out. So first we will study the out of the page case. Now this case, you are going to hold your pen like this. Thumb is going to show, thumb is going to show out of the page like this. Curled forefinger circulates, tell me, clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, yes. Because when thumb is thumb, electric current is out of the page. Thumb is out of the page, as you see. Curled forefinger is counterclockwise. So magnetic field around this wire is going to be counterclockwise. Now let's change. Say that electric current is going into, into the page. So this time you are going to change your thumb. Thumb will show down, down to the into the page. Curl forefinger this time will in the will show clockwise or counterclockwise. Tell me. Clockwise. It becomes clockwise now. You you do your with your pen as well. You will see it. 
Thumb is into the page, showing into the page. Curled forefinger is indicating direction of the magnetic field, which becomes now clockwise circulation. Electric current is out of the page. Magnetic field circulates counterclockwise direction. If electric current is into the page, this one represents into the page, cross into the page, dot out of the page. If it is into the page, magnetic field circulates in clockwise direction. So this is the case when electric current is perpendicular to plane of the page. When electric current is perpendicular to plane of the page, so it can be into the page or out of the page, two cases. But when electric current is parallel in the plane of the page, there could be four cases. Up to the plane of the page, down to the plane of the page, uh, to the right and to the left. First, if electric current is in the plane of the page, first one A, up to the plane of the page. We will study it like that. Up. This is up of your plane. This is down of your plane. Electric current direction is up to the plane of the page. Now I will show again by the camera. Now you are seeing my page. So this is top of the page. Mm -hmm. This is the yeah. bottom of the page. So when I say electric current is in the plane of the page, so your wire will be parallel to the page. It can be like this or like this or like that or like this. So but parallel, not perpendicular. In the plane of the page means your wire is parallel to the page. So first one is up to the plane of the page, up to the top. So electric current direction will show to the top. Yeah, the tip of your pen will show to the top. Now grasp your wire, grasp it. So thumb will show electric current direction. Tell me four finger points in which direction on the left side? Is it out of the page? or into the page. Look at my fingers. Out. Out, yes, on the <laughs> left, out. But curl it more on the right. What happens on the right? Into the page. Into. So when my electric current is up to the plane of the page, like this, my uh, and thumb is pointing up top of the page, curl four finger. On the left is out of the page, on the right is into the page. If one side is out, other side will be in. That's why look at that figure, you are going to see that electric magnetic field direction on the left is represented by that which is out of the page, but on the right side of the wire which is into the page. Then let's change the, uh, let's go back to the next one. Let me change, uh, share the screen again. Um, teacher, I have a question. Let me finish this, then I will take your question. Okay. B part. B part is now electric current direction is down. Down to the plane of the page. If it is down to the plane of the page, you are going to show, put your pen parallel to your page, but tip of the pen will show the bottom of the page. Tip of the pen will show bottom of the page. This is bottom. This is top. So electric current direction is towards the bottom, like that. So you are going to again apply the right hand rule. You will hold your pen so that, screen sharing is very clearly. Yes, this is the wire, and tip of the wire is showing the bottom of the page. So electric current is now down, down to the plane of the page, down. So hold it like this. So when electric current is down to the plane of the page, curl four finger. Now my four finger is on the left, pointing inside into the page, but on the right, if I curl it, it's going to be out of the page. If you use it, you are going to see on the right, it is out of the page. So if one side is into the page, other side will be out of the page. 
Now, direction of the magnetic field vector at that point is at the distance t from the wire uh, is magnetic field vector. When the compass are located around the current carrying wire, only this deflects in a direction tangent to concentric circles. And those, this tangent line to concentric circles will show us the direction of the magnetic field at that location. And we know what does tangent line mean. So these are tangent lines drawn on this uh, circle. Uh, then uh, this is an electric current now uh, going into the page, as you see, cross into the page. And if I use right hand rule, if I hold my pen so that my thumb is shown into the page, other code for finger will show the magnetic field direction. I can easily see that magnetic field around this wire is in clockwise direction. So then if I want to find draw the magnetic field vector at any point, uh, for example, right here or right there or right here, I have to first draw a tangent line. After that, I'm going to draw the direction of the magnetic field. So magnetic field vector in here going to be in that direction. Or if I want to draw the magnetic field line at that point, I have to first draw a tangent line and I'm going to indicate the direction of the arrow in the direction of the circulation of the magnetic field. Magnetic field vector at that point will be like this. Or in here, if I want to find the direction of the magnetic field, uh, the vector, I have to draw a tangent line. Then I, uh, the direction of the arrow will show the, uh, the direction of the circulation. So magnetic field vector will be like this. So I can draw so many vectors, uh, magnetic field vectors around uh, this uh, current carrying wire. So I see that every different point around this wire will have a different direction. So magnetic field continuously change in direction from point to point uh, around this uh, wire. Then uh, another thing when you, you can see that, check these two points. If this is the wire, if you check to take two uh, symmetric points, uh, one point is above the wire, another one is the below the wire. So you see that their directions, uh, magnetic field directions at those points are opposite. So then we can also say that direction of the magnetic field at two symmetric points with respect to wire always in opposite directions. You can choose other two points as well. For example, this is the wire. I choose this point and the symmetric point is that one. So in one of the magnetic field is downward, Another one, magnetic field is upward. Every time two symmetric points will have oppositely directed magnetic fields. That's why we can understand that if uh, there is an electric current up to the plane of the page, so if uh, in here magnetic field is, in here magnetic field is out of the page, so on the other side at symmetric point, so it's going to be into the page. So this is the same every symmetric point uh, around this wire, two symmetric points around this wire will have a magnetic field in opposite directions. And magnitude of the magnetic field. Uh, now I'm going to choose three different points uh, around this uh, wire, mag um, wire carries the electric current into the page, electric current uh, magnitude of the electric current is I. So K L and M. These are three points at equal distances from this wire. So these three points will have the same magnetic field, magnitude of this uh, magnetic field at these three points will be the same. Now I am going to uh, show a video to you and then uh, if you follow this video, you are going to see that when we change the distance to the wire, magnetic field also changes. So in this case, the current will be flowing down the wire so electric is in through, the through the cardboard. And let's see what direction the field is there. So look at the direction of the compass. And now they all the seem to be pointing to in a clockwise fashion around the wire. Yes, and the, the, the farther I get wire. from the wire, now it's taking the the weaker the field seems to get. I didn't quite line up as quickly or prominently. I'll pull them back a little farther. So 
They're all being influenced by the Earth's magnetic field there. And they're not all pointing perpendicular to the wire anymore. They're being more greatly influenced by the Earth's. So as you see, then the compass is moving away from the wire. Uh, the strength of the magnetic field at that point decreases. That's why when there's a current current wire, any point closer to the wire will, uh, will, be, uh, will have a stronger magnetic field than a point which is far from the wire. Then I, if I uh, write an equation or if I talk about the magnitude of the magnetic field, I can say that. There are three points I choose, K, L, M, because all these points have the same distance from the wire magnetic field. All these three points will be the same first this. Second, when the uh, distance from the have one of them is, of course, magnetic field. If you use a, so first one is the electric current. If you use a greater electric current, of course, magnetic field will be greater. This is certain. If you use a smaller electric current, magnetic field will be smaller. Yeah, magnetic field intensity at any point will be proportional to electric current. But second one is distance. As the distance from the wire is increasing, when you take the compass away from the wire, you observe that magnetic field intensity getting weaker. Then we say that magnitude of the magnetic field at any point is inversely proportional to the distance. Yani, if I write the magnetic field B, magnetic field B is proportional to electric current. This is for sure. And second one is magnetic field is inversely proportional to distance from wire to that point. If we combine these two, I can get a proportionality. Magnetic field at any given is given point is proportional to I over D. This is a proportionality, and every proportionality can be done by an equality in, by inserting a constant. In here, we are going to insert a constant. This constant is mu over 2 pi. So magnetic field at this point, at that point, or here, or here, if all these points are at the same distance from this wire, so all these points will have a magnet, magnetic field intensity, which is equal to B times B is equal to I divided by D multiplied by mu divided by 2 pi. So what is this mu? Uh, this mu is a, a coefficient uh, related to the medium in which magnetic field lines circulate. Now in here, magnetic fields are circulating in air. So that's why this mu will be belong to the air. So it is called, mu is called magnetic permeability of the medium. And it is constant, it is a constant depending on the type of the medium. For air, generally, we are going to talk about the air. So for air, this magnetic permeability has a constant number or air or free space, mu and represented by mu or 4 pi times 10 to the power of negative 7 Tesla times meter per divided by ampere. This is the mu. And we are going to divide this mu by 2 pi. Of course, 2 pi is a constant number. Mu is a constant number. This division is going to be a constant number. So I am going to calculate magnetic field intensity at any given point by a constant multiplied by I over D, which tells you that magnetic field is proportional to electric current, but magnetic field intensity is inversely proportional to distance from wire to that point. This unit is important. Okay, which of the following is the uh, unit of magnetic permeability? They can ask like this, most probably they ask like this. So uh, I can get it by using the equation, equation of uh, mu O, we know that B is equal to mu O divided by two pi I over D cross product. We can get mu O times I is equal to B two pi D divided by I divided by I. So mu O will be B times two pi D over I. So we know that B is Tesla. D is distance, which is meter. I is ampere. So mu I over Tesla times meter per ampere is the unit of magnetic permeability. Now let's solve a problem. Problems are not so hard in this uh, section. Uh, First problem, simple problem. Calculate the magnitude of the magnetic field 
at a point in air, so which means you are going to use the magnetic permeability of free space, at a distance of 0.1 meter from a straight conducting wire uh, carrying a current of 10 ampere, knowing that mu O is equal to 4 by times 10 to the power of negative 7. And there's a straight wire which carries a current of I is equal to 10 ampere and find the magnetic field, magnitude of the magnetic field at a point in air at a distance. And you are going to take a distance from the wire D, which is 0.1 meter. It can be this distance, say that K, or it can be that distance, say L. Every point at a distance of 0.1 meter will have the same magnitude of the magnetic field. So calculate that magnetic field at any point at a distance of 0.1 meter from the wire. So um, I is, as I said, uh, 10 ampere. Distance is given as 0.1 meters. Mu O is given, so calculate B. We know the B equation, B is equal to mu O divided by 2 pi I over D. So then mu O is 4 pi times 10 to the power of negative 7 divided by 2 pi, multiplied by I is 10 ampere, divided by distance, which is 0 0.1. So 2 pi, 4 pi divided by 2 pi, it is 2, it becomes 2. So B is equal to 2 times 10 to the power of negative 7 is the this part. 10 over 0 0.1 is 100 over 1, which is 10 to the power of 2. If you multiply them, you will get the answer. 2 times 10 to the power of negative 5 Tesla, it is the magnitude of the magnetic field at a point 0.1 meter from the current carrying wire. This is ministry exam question and very popular one is this one. They are changing sometimes asking the magnetic field intensity. Sometimes they are giving magnetic field intensity, asking the electric current, but a very popular one is this one in ministry exam. 